What's good guys, it's Monk here. Uh, today we're going to look at the track In Kanyamba, which is track 11, I think, on my debut full-length album, Temple of Monk. Uh, if you want to listen to my album, I'll leave the link in the video description. Uh, but basically today we're just going to go through uh, this track and I'm just going to show you everything that's going on. It's kind of a bit, it's probably like the most experimental one on the album. Uh, the sort of selling point is that there is no kick drum or snare drum used, which is very unusual for a dubstep track um so we'll start at the top and we'll just go we'll go through the whole thing into the bottom you can see i like to color code my tracks um i usually have the pads in like a blue uh, melodic content in these oranges my bass is always in like a deep purple kind of color my drums I always have as like different shades of green depending on what drums they are um yeah yellow for like ambiences that are like non-musical ambiences uh pink i usually have all my transitional effects and stabs and sort of extra bits and bobs like that but anyway we're going to go through and just like show you what's going on so the first one at the top is the vinyl crackle pretty standard if you watched my other track breakdowns uh you'll know that i put that in every tune uh, next up jungle ambience quite quiet you can hear that that's actually side chained yeah got compressor on there yeah side, side chain into the kick so the actual jungle ambience is sort of pumping with the kick drum um there's a different soundscape in the intro because um i think i mentioned this in my other track breakdown as well like temple of monk is a concept album so all the tracks flow into each other and i did this with soundscapes so that soundscape at the beginning will be whatever the soundscape was in the track before this one so then it flows over and there's probably in the automation there is um i've automated that soundscape to come out and the new one to come in and that's what's going out so like the track afterwards will have that in as well uh then there's the vocal sample from the intro more than half the world's plant and animal species live in swamps and channels yeah that is from a documentary. I'm not going to say which one, just to avoid uh, baiting myself out. And transitional effects, white noise sweeps, my white noise down and white noise up. These are just samples that I made myself like a while ago that I like to reuse. There's a riser that I have here going in the sort of mid section into the second drop. <laughs> effect stabs. Um, in here, mostly dub sirens and bleeps from the dub siren. Um, I have a Benny Dub Lick Shot dub siren. For those that are interested, I'll just grab it so I can show you. This is my dub siren. Uh, yeah, Benny Dub Lick Shot. Bang in. Then we come to the congas. So I'm actually going to open up the drums because this is all related to each other. The congas. Uh, drum sounds are what makes up the whole track because it doesn't have a kick or a snare. All the rhythm is in these tribal drums. Um, so the original sample, the closest to the original sample, is on this track here, Bongos and Congos. Which sounds pretty weak. So up here I've got OTT Congos, which is the same track copied over, but I've slapped an OTT on it which is going to like make all of the detail and like the sm the quieter sounds are going to come up louder and you can hear that's like already added extra movement and stuff um there was a kick drum in there originally and i decided to take it out and then i kind of went with that like from there on as the concept that I wouldn't use like an obvious kick or a snare. I do have this track that I've sort of labelled like snares, uh, which is these these sounds, because it's not like a traditional snare sound, but it's it's in the place where the snare would be, and it's acting as that's the, the rhythm that the snare would keep usually. Yeah, then there's some hats. kind of keeping the constant rhythm uh this shaker which is just adding some extra perks 
Uh, then the bongos and congos, and then you add the ATT ones, so all together. Now you probably still think that sounds quite weak compared to the actual track when you listen to it. That's because what I did was once I had this congo pattern, like it's pretty random to be honest. That's the uh, that's the pattern. So it's like the drums are just like hitting in this rhythm. And what I then did was copy that MIDI information straight over to an 808 track. Uh, it was just an ah. Uh, so I use Sublab for my 808s usually, but here I obviously for some reason decided to use a sample that I got in Quick Sampler. Um, I basically copied that exact MIDI information, stuck it in, onto an 808 track basically, and uh, you know, played it all together. So now we have like weight and low end energy within the track, which kind of gives it that dubstep-ish feel. Um, up here, uh, I glazed over that, but that's just the intro congas. I quite often do that, like in my intros, I'll copy over the drums from the main track and they'll just usually be filtered a bit with some effects on. Yeah, probably automating. Yeah, you see that, the echo. Before the drop. Right, and then down, we're into like melodic content. Again, there, I've sort of copied the main bow sounds um, into the intro, but just um, with some extra EQ on it and filters. Uh, dark bow, sounds like this. And moon guitar. Plays that other melody. Now the, that's the main melodic content of the track. I think they're both audio files now, yeah. I bounced them to audio. I do believe they were actually made with sounds from um, uh, Spitfire Audio Labs. I'm pretty sure that bow sound at least comes from comes from this plugin, which is actually a free plugin. It's really great, like sam sampled instrument plugin um, from their string section. Uh, I wonder if I can see the plucks. Yeah, there you go. There's moon guitars in there. That's what I was using. And then one of these bows, I can't remember which. So that's those main things. Um, then it's just all the atm atmosphere, really. There's some more jungle atm atmosphere down there. Yeah, that's that's some atmosphere. That's some atmosphere I've got going on. I think that I would have made that as a pad, resampled, like done loads of effects, resampled it, and then you can see here it's quite minimal. I've added a flanger and I've got this like filtering going on. Uh, high end Atmos. Yeah, so again, that would have just been a normal pad before that I'd like processed and then bounced to audio. Um, I do like bouncing everything to audio, like you'll notice that a lot in, in my project files, like I like to really process everything first, then bounce it to audio so it basically has no processing on. Um, and that's going to help you with like CPU and stuff, like your computer is not going to suffer as much as the project gets big. Um, I also prefer that because it means I'm like committing to something. I like get the audio to a certain point where I'm like I like that and I want to use it and then I bounce it in place and delete the MIDI so I have to commit to it basically and, I, and that helps me to not like take too long like I can get ideas out quicker that way it doesn't work for everyone but that's how I do things anyway um yeah and then you can see the like the weirdness going on in this you can hear that it's like fluttering that's all coming from this chorus on just like really extreme settings and then lastly, just here, there's the intro verb. Which is actually, what I've done there is I've taken the reverb. Over here I have reverb on ascend. And what I've actually done is exported that reverb track from the main, from the main drop. And put it back in, in the intro so you've just got the reverb like from the whole track. Got some automation there, I think. Yeah, that's everything going on there, though. Hopefully you found that interesting. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully.